Good morning, traders. My name is Christopher Vecchio, currency strategist with Daily Effects. Today is Thursday, July 14th, 2016. These are your FX headlines as we turn the page to North America and another quiet day or quieter day on the U.S. economic calendar. Uh, sure, we have initial and continuing claims, the weekly reports, but no one really cares about PPI. There are a few Fed speakers on the calendar, Lockhart, George, and Kaplan do up. Uh, this afternoon, or this morning into this afternoon, 11.15, Lockhart's speaking, 1.15, Fed's George is speaking, and then up at 7 p.m., Fed's Kaplan speaking. So, as it were, market focus today is elsewhere still. BOE just had their most important rate decision in several months, if not years, outside of those QIR meetings, uh, as the market was really looking forward to the BOE cutting rates. There was an 86% chance of a rate cut today, according to overnight index swaps, and the BOE did the exact opposite. On hold, 8 to 1 vote to keep rates unchanged, 9 to nothing to keep QE unchanged. But a big silver lining, a big but, if you will, we look at what's going on in price action today, and we're seeing that in the last hour, markets have come off a little bit here in the pound. Well, why is that? Well, in their monetary policy report, the BOE said as much that they foresaw that monetary policy would be looser come August. Now, in August, they'll have another quarterly inflation report. They'll have new forecasts in hand for inflation, for GDP, for employment. They'll be able to factor in what they feel to be the impacts of Brexit, and then they have the groundwork laid to cut rates. You know what? This sounds awfully familiar to our thesis about central banks being too transparent, right? In an effort to, to become transparent, they become predictable. Central banks don't like acting until they have evidence in hand to support their actions. If the BUE comes out and cuts rates on a non-projection uh, month, then it sends a signal of worry, of emergency. And in fact, I'd like to argue that if the BUE, uh, by doing so today, uh, the markets are actually probably in a little bit better shape on a sentiment-wise. The BUE has been ahead of the curve. By not cutting rates now, it acts as a vote of confidence. Sure enough, even though markets may be disappointed by the no easing today, we know that more easing is possibly coming down the line. You look to risk, S&P 500's perking right back up. 2169 here, perked up to fresh all-time highs overnight in that 2174 area. Our thesis about the dynamic between central banks and actual market happenings seems to be playing out that central banks are flooding the market with emergency-like crisis, like policies and yet there's no crisis on hand. Brexit hasn't occurred yet and Theresa May said it's not going to occur at least through the end of this year until they can get a better footing as to what terms they should expect uh, now that they're looking to leave the EU. That may be good enough in the near term with the BUJ looking to do more, Abenomics getting a leg up, ECB standing by to do more, Fed keeping rates at lower for longer. It looks good for risk. As it were, it's translating into a better morning, at least for oil. Not terrible, but uh, oil is climbing to the top side again. We're seeing that in turn, gold is coming off, right? The relationship isn't necessarily about the dollar because the dollar and gold are both falling back today. It's about risk. The dollar and gold are both risk on risk off currencies now. We're seeing that when in this environment where S&P is rallying, where the yen's coming off, gold is losing its bid. Even the dollar is losing a little bit of ground as well. With respect to the dollar in the short term, however, I want to keep an eye on this triangle that's been forming, uh, in, uh, at least you know since the 24th, we'll call it actually the 27th. And if peace couldn't shake us out of this range, the BOE thus far is trying to shake us out of this range, but nothing thus yet. I, you know, I would suggest that you have to watch the technicals here. In this point in time, MACD and the four-hour time frame stochastics both starting to trend lower below their respective median or neutral lines. You see price moving below its moving averages. Even if we pull up to a daily chart, you're starting to see that the bullish momentum is seeing a, a little bit of truncation here. So I think the dollar may not be in the greatest shape overall. Aussie seems to be leading the way higher, still wants to push to the top side. A decently strong employment report there last night. Overall, despite the small under 10,000 net jobs gained, you see that it was a due to a large switch in the composition of jobs from mostly part-time to mostly full-time. So overall, Aussie still looks like it's in good footing. Right now, have to consider the fact that Euro here getting a leg up. BOE doesn't see a crisis. We know that's good for the Euro. If there is a crisis, that's bad for the Euro. Right now, translating into a stronger Euro dollar this morning. 
euro pound seeing a rebound as well likely driving the move again still not comfortable looking long euro dollar until we can get some traction above the key reversal level 111.86 so still some ways to go and right now we're back at that 34 EMA so we're not quite out of the woods just yet uh, dollar got to be selective it's not like the yen's really driving the move either dollar yen seeing that price action breaking higher here that supports the risk these thesis and potential action from the BOJ and more abenomics stimulus coming forward along those lines if we're looking for the dollar to move it's going to be european centric so euro dollar pound dollar if pound dollar can't continue to climb and rallies into that 135 area or sold which in my opinion seems like the reasonable play right now knowing that the BOE is going to do more in just a month to me going forward at least from this juncture get a rally up into 135 you could sell pound dollar there. Pound's going to fall. Euro probably falls back. Seems like we're due for some sideways action in the greenback for the foreseeable future, knowing that markets still haven't priced in a rate hike anytime before December 2017 at this stage of the game. All right, that's it for me. I'll be back later on with another video. Of course, you can find me in the Daily FX On Demand Room every weekday from 7 to 8 Eastern. 11 to 12 GMT. You can always get in touch with me in the real-time news feed, stock reports, and Twitter at CVECUFX, or follow me or excuse me, email me, cvecu at dailyfx.com. Appreciate your time and attention. Good luck trading the rest of today. Remember, watch out for those Fed speakers around lunchtime today and uh, early into this evening.